right, welcome to leg six of Beer and Bush Flights. We're back in Microsoft Flight Simulator today. We're taking off from this little uh, mountainside airstrip that we had a lot of trouble landing out at leg five. I've got to say, I'm really not looking forward to the takeoff from here either. So we're going to try a few tricks. Let's, uh, let's make sure our brakes are on because it never likes to set the parking brake by default. Yep, and it didn't this time either. Okay. Why, why am I moving? I think we're going to turn back. I'm going to need that extra altitude. This thing is so crazy with not setting a parking brake on here. All right, we got takeoff flap set. That's going to be really important. I think what I'm going to try to do, because we need to head back that way. And there's some really high terrain that way. So the problem with that is we really don't have much room to climb out. So I think what we're going to try to do is head out east or, or maybe head out west, backtrack a little bit in the way we came, uh, gain some altitude before we tackle the next part of this trip. So first things first, we are we're definitely going to need to uh, fix our flight plan like always. No idea why this is always a problem. <laughs> so let's go find LFCO here. LFCO direct and enter. Okay. All right. Uh, so it has us going out. We are at LFMB. Oh, I'm sorry. We're at LFMB. That would be why. I wonder I got so turned around. Okay. There we are. LFMB. Enter. Direct two. <clears throat> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sorry. Bear with me a minute. I have to hit the direct two button. It's either enter or direct. <laughs> It's either enter, direct to, or center press, and you never really can remember which is, which one it is. <clears throat> okay, that, see that, and that looks more like it. Okay. So our nav log says, uh, as you begin to explore the great heights of the Pyrenees, for this leg you will need to climb to 9,500 feet after taking off. Turn west and begin the climb, yep, as you backtrack. So it's going to have us backtrack. It knows that we can't get over that freaking terrain. Perform a U-turn toward Castilian Airport and head south until you discover Lake Duck. Well, okay. All right, I'm going to move this out of the way so we actually have a decent view of things. And I think the first thing I'm going to do is try to get us turned around a little bit. Because I need all the room I can get down here, I think. Oh, maybe this was a bad idea. <laughs> Okay, can we get turned back around? That would be really nice. Oh, we're in the tall grass. Yeah, that's a little sketch. Alright, so I want to use as much of this runway as physically possible. And then I'm also going to do a run up over here. Let's get our flaps set. We got plenty of fuel for this trip, I think. It's a relatively short leg, this one. I think one of the shortest ones in the whole trip, actually. Some, uh, some differential braking here. I don't know if that gave us much more room, but I mean, it doesn't hurt. Okay, brakes on, full throttle. Okay. I think that's about as much life as we're gonna get out of it. So let's let's send it. See what happens here. Um. Boy, I don't have a lot of confidence that we're not going to hit this freaking tree. <laughs> it is right there, isn't it? Okay, pull up, pull up, pull up. Holy crap. Don't sink, yeah. But that would be ideal. <laughs> uh, okay, flaps up. Good. So we're going to start heading out west. Try not to get turned around. It's, uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty sketchy up here. It's really easy to get turned around down one of these valleys. 
Um, so I think we're going to head this way. Maybe I'll try to make some S turns through here too, to, uh, so we don't have to backtrack so far. So I think I'm going to try to climb to uh, about 8,000-ish feet before I turn back. It said we needed to uh, needed about 9,500 feet to clear it. Okay. So I'm, I've actually recorded this uh, this flight twice now. Um, the first time I recorded it, um, I'm at the, the Oculus mirror settings were kind of screwy. For some reason, it wasn't recording. Let me just make sure it is now. It sure is now. Um, but yeah, for some reason, I don't know if I just didn't have it selected or what, but usually I use Oculus Mirror to record what I'm doing. Um, except this time, it was just a black screen. So probably noticed I have better audio now. I did get a new mic set up. Still playing with the settings on that, but it sure got to be better than the mic I was using on the, uh, on the Oculus headset. The main thing I really am trying to fix is sort of this head bobbing that just naturally happens in the headset, especially when I'm talking. Um, cause that's, that's really kind of, uh, distracting when you're watching it back. So I'm going to try a few different, uh, video stabilization techniques. Uh, the one in Oculus Mirror is pretty good. I've been playing with some of the settings there and it does a pretty decent job, but, um, I would like to get it a little bit better. All right, we're closing in. We are up to 7,000 feet. Hopefully by the end of this, we had about, uh, 8,000. Honestly, we could probably turn back a little earlier. I, I just want to be safe. This has been a pretty sketchy trip the last couple legs. So uh, I'm working on another video that I hope to have out within the next day or two. I think I'm going to try to film most of the uh, the, the voiceover stuff um, after I record this bush trip here. But I'm going to compare the Freedom Fox to the Wilga as far as, you know, what's the best bush plane add-on in, um, in Microsoft Flight Simulator. They don't really seem comparable on the surface, but they are probably two of the highest quality bush plane uh, add-ons and I know when I was looking for something um, those were the two I was comparing so they are fairly different from each other um, but I think I'm in a place where I can kind of highlight some of the interesting differences between the two and why you might want one or the other so that's kind of my next, uh, next video idea so we're going to want to head back east if I remember correctly right Which is uh, back that way. <laughs> Get turned around doing all these like S turns, man. Okay. Yep, definitely back that way. Yeah, let's head straight back down. I think we're right about somewhere right below us is. I think where we took off from, maybe somewhere over there. Get kind of turned around here. Let's it say, turn west and begin to climb as you backtrack to lose sense of war. Perform a U-turn back to Castillon de Court Airport. Head south. Okay. All right. Okay, I think we're good on altitude. Let's bring our throttles back a little bit. Let's see, where are we supposed to be going? Okay. Alright. So I was completely turned around. That was not at all where we were previously. It's much further down this way. But that's okay. Now that we have plenty of altitude, we can get through all of this. So 
So yeah, hopefully my audio is sounding a little better now. I'm using some of the filters in OBS uh, to try to improve the sound of it a little bit. Might mess with those a little bit more, see how things go. I am really am focused on trying to stabilize this VR footage. I think I've done about as much as I can um, within the utilities that I have to, you know, the, the options that are available to me when I'm recording. So I think my next step is going to be to try to smooth some of this out in post-production. Maybe do some, um, maybe do some stabilization and final cut or something. Let's see what we can do there. Okay, we're going to turn right down. Let's see. Uh, right down this way, I think, right? Yep. Okay. Right. Beyond Solitary Lake, that's Koba. Wait, five more lakes in close proximity. Okay. So I imagine those are going to be... Well, here's a couple lakes right here. I'm going to try to shoot it straight, straight through this little dip between these two, uh, these two peaks. That's a word I've been looking for. I've been trying to describe these mountains and I have the word peaks hasn't been coming to me for some reason. So yeah, I think I'm going to do a video um, comparing it's going to be like a which bush plane is best bush plane as far as add-on aircraft go in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, and I'm just going to talk about the merits of both the Freedom Fox and the Wilga. They do feel super different. I've spent a little bit of time in, in both of them now. More time in the Freedom Fox, but I've, I've put some time into the Wilga. Um, it's such a cool plane, but I think they serve two very different purposes, two different type of, uh, of missions. So I'm going to try to kind of show show what those are. All right, looking for lakes. So yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I don't know what qualifies as a lake down here. There's a lot of bodies of water, if that's what they mean. If more lakes in close proximity, make your way towards them. Okay. Now well, I think we're on to the next POI. From the center of this cluster of lakes, turn and head east. Up ahead, behind a rocky peak, awaits a sixth, larger body of water. Okay. I think I see it on the flight plan here. A sixth uh, body of water. Oops. My microphone, sorry. That's the problem. Now that I've got a microphone in my face and I'm playing in VR, I'm not, uh, not exactly aware of its location, but it's on a big boom arm, right in front of my face. So I'm gonna have to get used to that. Okay, I guess this is the fifth body of water? Yeah, okay, so we're headed over. This is the fifth body of water that it wanted us to swing over to. What's our, uh, what's our next task ahead here? Okay, adjust your course south from Lac de Wu and follow the valley toward the nearby town of Ergonot. Begin your descent to 6,500 feet. Oh, wow, we're descending already. I knew this was a short one, um, but it always surprises me how quickly we're coming up on the last of the POIs here. Okay, so we can just start bringing this thing down. toward the nearby town of Argonaut. Okay. That's what you call a town? Jeez. Alright. Interesting. Do I follow this? No. No, we're turning left. We're heading east. Further down here. As we uh, continue our descent. From Aru. Turn southeast, yep, as you follow the branch of Neste and Laurent. Okay, which I'm not hitting any mountains here. Eventually, we'll see the waters of Lake Geno Loudonville. Okay. 
man, I still got to get used to this. I feel like I'm sort of out of my element with the new setup, with the new microphone, with all this new stuff. So I'm, I'm still, I feel like I'm still trying to get back into the groove of things. I feel like I had a pretty good, you know, flow going with the old uh, setup. And it's like, it's funny, something as simple as just changing a microphone and sticking a big boom arm in front of your face all kind of feels a little different. Not sure what it is. Hopefully this landing will go a little better though than last time. That would be a nice start to this. Second half of our trip. So this is called Beer and Bush Flights and I'm finishing... Oh, the rest of the six pack that I had of this Victory Brewing. It's a sour triple and it's really sour. Um, it's also like nine and a half percent alcohol. So I'm finishing them slowly. <laughs> um, it was a little more sour than I expected it to be, actually. I guess that was probably coming from what was it? The Citrus Squall, the Dogfish had one, which was a bit sour, but yeah, nothing like this. But if you like tart stuff, you might like a sour triple. One from Victory, at least. I think this is our town of Aragonaut, I would guess. Also, I've been trying to uh, improve the VR performance in the sim. I'm, I'm kind of lucky. I can run the sim at fairly high settings in VR and everything looks good and it plays well, but you know, it's still not perfect. It's never going to be. Even with the highest of end, you know, highest end of hardware, it's still going to struggle in VR with this game. But there is a plugin that just came out that looks really cool. Um, it's called Smooth Flight. And it's kind of similar to Auto FPS, if you've heard of that. But basically, what it does is it, it's a program that runs on your desktop. And uh, it dynamically adjusts the settings in Microsoft Flight Simulator um, to target a specific frame rate. So it'll do things like change the terrain level of detail, object level of detail, particularly when you get closer to the ground um, to try to kind of you know keep the stuttering and stuff to a minimum. So I'm playing with that a little bit. It was doing kind of some funky things that I wasn't quite understanding. Um, so I didn't use it in this recording because there's already enough new crap that I'm trying to figure out right now. Um, but this looks pretty promising. And if I can get the settings dialed in, um, it could really be kind of a game changer as far as, you know, people flying in VR, definitely worth a look. It's pretty cool. As you pass over Lake Chenois, adjust your heading slightly to land on runway 9. Okay, so this airport looks more like, uh, well, like an airport compared to the last place we landed at, so I'm a little more hopeful, a little more optimistic uh, that we're going to get this one without too much trouble. But it does look like it's on an uphill, doesn't it? Which, that that can always be a little tricky. You're tempted to just kind of pull power early, um, and then you just pancake right on the runway, because, you know, it's like, you feel like, you're, uh, you feel like you're descending more rapidly than maybe you are, at least to me. I don't know, maybe that's just a me thing. Okay. All right, we're going to follow this sucker around. Head uh, south. And, and our runway should be up here on the left shortly. So this is a really short lag. So I have an update on the robotic vacuum cleaner. I talked about it, oh, I think it was back in leg four, actually. You know, I introduced this this robotic vacuum cleaner. It does a great job, um, but it's caused this rift in our household, particularly with me and my partner. Kind of this ridiculous thing, but it's sort of funny watching it play out. So at this point, I'm pretty sure he's sabotaging it because after it runs, um, like I'll come downstairs and I just find crap smeared on the floor. Uh, this is after it's already done its cleaning routine, so I'm pretty sure he's sabotaging like all of its work. Um, I have to figure out how I'm going to confront him about that. 
but uh, I'll keep you updated. So I think we're closing in on the runway up here. Should be. It should be within view, but it's really hard to tell. Because uh, it looks like it's kind of tucked in between, between these two peaks here. So I think what we're going to do is uh, descend a little bit. It's at about 6,500. 6,500 feels good. So we're going to try to keep it at 65 until I see the runway and have a pretty clear idea of what altitude it's at. Do you guys see it up there? I see a couple of things that look like they could be a runway. Ah, I think that might be it. I think I see it. Do you see it? Like right on that uphill branch. Yeah, let's uh, let's cut power. Let's start descending a little bit. Maybe get us closer to... I think it said it was around 4,000 feet, so I'm going to try to get us closer to 5 before we yank it in here. Yeah, we're going to want to pull power a little bit once we get closer, so... I'm going to overshoot it a little bit, because I want to leave myself a little more room to descend and slow down as I turn back. So we're going to go past it a little bit on this base, and then we're going to turn, turn down. I'd like to get closer to 5,000 feet on this and be able to throw out flaps when I come right out. Oh, GPS is freaking out. It's fine, you can switch, I don't care. Okay. Alright. So we're in the we're in the white bar. So we can throw out flaps. I'm gonna turn us back here. I'm gonna do a little bit of an S shape back. That's sort of been the theme of this trip. We can reintroduce some throttle. I don't know if this is like an advisable method <laughs> of landing in general, but it kind of felt right. It's pretty much anything that you can do to make it work. It's fair game. Right, we got our landing flaps out. We haven't used barely any fuel. Did we use any fuel at all? I can't even tell. I thought we would have used a little more than that because like we had to climb a good deal. Uh, but once we were in cruise, yeah, I don't know. That's kind of weird. Maybe that's a glitch. I feel like we should have used some fuel. We've been in the air for almost a half hour, right? Wow, that's a big drop. Okay. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to keep throttle on a little longer than I feel like I normally would. We are on an uphill, so we have a little more room to play with here. Okay. All right. That wasn't too bad. And here we are at LFIP. That was a successful landing on the first try, so I feel pretty good about that. So that concludes leg six of Beer and Bush Trips. Stay tuned next week to see what kind of trouble we get into here.